Hello, and welcome back to Heart Centered Money Conversations. I am one of your hosts, Laura Plahuda, emotional clearing practitioner, and we have Kristen Maybe here, who is a financial coach and an amazing friend of mine. And we're very excited to be back here for this episode on New Year's Eve. So if you're catching this today, happy New Year's Eve. Super exciting. And um, we're grateful that you're here because obviously you want to make your financial situation a little bit different this year, which is always a great thing to keep leveling up every single year. So we're proud of you for being here. And so if you're curious about tax-free savings account, um, why they seem to be kind of like the go-to number one thing to start your investment journey, today we're going to be chatting a little bit more about that and really unraveling the mystery behind why these accounts are um, our friend when it comes to really being able to start that investment journey. And so before we dive into um, today's topic of being able to maximize your money and really like getting into the power of tax-free savings accounts. I just wanted to touch base and see how things have been going with everything since the last episode that we did. And if you haven't caught that one yet, um, then feel free to go back and catch that one. I've put the link in the description for you. But um, in that one, we had kind of left this call to action at the very end for everybody to really be able to tune into where you have like little wasted money kind of flowing out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that can happen with subscriptions or this or that when we're just really not being very mindful with what we're doing. So how was it doing that? How was it um, determining how much money you want to put aside when you're really paying yourself first? And mm -hmm. I love that concept, Kristen, because when when you first shared it with me, I was like, um, pay yourself first. Oh, I'm paying myself first all the time. Like I, <laughs> I have money coming in and I'm spending it. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not <laughs> myself, but it's just spending, but it's like a totally different concept where it's like, yeah, you can still do that. You're going to do that and live your life. However, it's this yeah. paying yourself first for the long term as well. <laughs> and totally. actually being intentional with it and knowing what to do about it. Um, so that's what we're going to get into more today, which I'm excited for this topic because once I started implementing this in my life, it got me so excited mm -hmm. about financial stuff. So yeah. if you did that homework, um, how did it go? We would love to hear. Um, put an oh yeah baby in the comments if you did complete it and I know for me I went back through and did it as well and there were a few more things that I canceled I canceled one of my Canva memberships because mm -hmm. I really wasn't using it for marketing stuff with the pro version I was like I can go back to the free version and mm -hmm. uh, it's nice being able to do that yeah for myself I have a subscription uh, I will say I haven't canceled it yet and it's been really heavy for me. And it's because it's a project that I need to just let go of. And I feel like I'm giving up on it, but it's just because I've moved in a different direction. So I'm going to say here, I'm going to be accountable that by the next video, I am canceling the subscription because who wants to waste money on something they're not using? Totally. And we'll hold you accountable. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you for sharing. And um, just a little disclaimer for everybody watching this as well. Everything that we're sharing on this video series is strictly educational purposes only. It's from mine and Kristen's personal experience and also from Kristen's professional experience as well with her being a financial coach as well. But it really is for your educational purposes only. And everybody's situation is going to be completely different. Um, however, yeah. these are some things that we feel we would love to share so that you can really make the most out of this financial journey. And as always, if you have any specific questions for your specific case, feel free to either um, put them in the comments below or feel free to just reach out to one of us and uh, we can kind of get you sorted from there. Yeah, for sure. I'm so excited to jump into this topic because I think that this is the topic of where do I put my money? <laughs> it's so important, but the reality is unless we seek that information, not very many people are coming to us and say, hey, Laura, you should put your money here or you should put your money there. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited to dive into it. Like Laura mentioned, we're going to be talking a lot around the tax-free savings account today because it really can be your best friend when it comes to just starting your investments. And I'll kind of go over the reasons. 
Um, and it's we're going to talk about the basing it on paying yourself first. So we're just starting to put that 10 percent aside. We need to know where to put that amount. So this isn't necessarily the best account if you've been investing for a long time. It can be but it really depends on your own personal situation. So we're gonna kind of cover a few different things, but obviously do a little bit of your own research or feel free to reach out for personalized advice. If you're trying to figure out what's the best situation for you, hopefully this will give you a better idea by the end of the uh, our video today. And so I wanna talk about two main accounts. They're called registered accounts. Um, before we dive more deeper into the tax free savings. And one is going to be the RSP. So a lot of times people will start investing in their RSP. The challenge there is it's meant to be a long term account. It's not necessarily the best account for something short term like an emergency fund. And so there's a lot of controversy in terms of if you should even own a, an RSP or when you should open up your RSP. And again, it, it's different for every person. I personally will sit down with my clients and see if it fits best for them. But let me give you some nuggets on how it works. So the first thing is with an RSP, there is no taxes when you put that money in, you actually get a tax deduction. So if you put money into your RSP, if you're an employee, you get money back at the end of the year typically. If if you're self-employed, you get to pay less taxes at the end of the year, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which is great. But the challenge is, is that when you want to withdraw that money, it can be costly because you're paying the taxes when you withdraw that money. So it isn't tax free the whole way. So it works well if you're in a lower tax bracket at the time that you're withdrawing than the time that you put the money in. So we're going to do a whole video about RSPs because there's a lot to uncover. But those I'm are kind so of the basics. I'm so excited for that one. I just want to say that I'm so excited to chat <laughs> yeah. more about RSPs because I've learned so much about them and how to like really leverage them. So I'm very excited for it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And if you know how to use these different accounts, you can get so far ahead in your finances. So far ahead. So with the, the RSP, your contribution grows by 18% of your income and it grows over time. So say this year you had, you know, $10,000 in contribution room, but you didn't put $10,000 in there. It carries over to future years. So you don't lose that room if you don't use it. So that's one benefit, but it is 18% of your income. So if you wanted to put more, you would max it out. And so that's the RSP. We, we talk a little bit about taxes and contribution room. So now let's talk about the tax-free savings account. So with the tax-free savings account, I really love the tax-free savings account because I feel like it gives you a lot more flexibility. And with that, the tax-free savings account, there's no taxes when you put the money in and there's no taxes when you take the money out, which means you get to keep more of that money for yourself because you're not paying those taxes to the government. Does that make sense? Yeah, so yes. perfect. So now in terms of contribution room, thank you, Laura, for throwing up this chart. So your contribution room grows every single year based on the year that you turned 18. So if you were 18 before 2009, your contribution room will be the maximum amount, which is in 2024 is 95,000. You can see at the bottom of this chart. But if you were 18, say in... 2012, your contribution room is going to be less. So you can kind of look at this chart to add up those years based off the year you turned 18 to figure out what your maximum contribution is. I'm sure there's calculators online that I can help you out with it as well. So we just pulled up this quick chart so you can kind of see, but the contribution room grows every year. And so you can look to see each year how much it's going to grow by. So in 2024, it grows by $7,000 this year. So if you max out your tax free savings account last year, that means you have an extra 7000 that you can put in this year. So the next thing I want to talk about is taking out the money. <laughs> it's like, great, how much can I put in? But I want to know how much I can take out, right? So 
when you take out that amount, so say the maximum is $95,000, you put $95,000 in, and now it's grown to 150 because you invested it well, and you want to take out a whole $150,000. A lot of people think that when you get that contribution room back the next year, so if I took out $150,000 this year, I get my contribution back the following year. So that'd be in 2025. But most people think that you could only put in that limit that was shown on the chart. And that's actually not true. So you could actually put the limit in plus the growth. So you would be able to get that whole $150,000 back that you can put back into the tax free savings account. You don't lose that room. Does that make sense? I explained that all right. It does. Yeah. And people may be curious, like how you like could have that much growth, say in one of these accounts. And we'll be chatting more about that as well. And Chris can go more into depth with that because that is the value of having this tax free savings account is that even though when you see those limits, it's not like that's actually all you can ever have into it until the next year when they contribute it because of the value of what these accounts actually can do. You can actually have that limit higher. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. And you can like all of the growth is tax free, which is so exciting. You can grow this account to millions of dollars if you invest it properly. Right. So you can have so much growth tax free in this account. And this is why I love the tax free savings when you're first starting out again, see if it fits best for you but it's typically a good option. So let's look at a tax-free savings account versus a traditional savings account, say with your bank, for example, right? If you just had a bank account, typically you're getting very little interest. They're like, here's 10 cents. If, if that, yeah. right? like, <laughs> like the interest, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you don't have as much flexibility with a traditional savings account if it's just in a savings or a checkings account. So with the tax-free savings account, I personally think it's poorly named because it's not just savings, like how we typically think of savings account. When I first thought savings account, I thought it was savings account at a bank. But with the tax-free savings, you can actually invest in it. So what does that mean? In a tax-free savings or any registered account, like the RSP as well, you can put things inside of it. Like you can put in a bond or mutual fund. You can put in a high interest savings account inside of your tax-free savings account. You can put in stocks, right? There's so many options of what you can put into it. And so the analogy is, is that if you had a gift, a gift basket, for example, and you wanted to put different things inside of that gift basket. So your tax-free savings would be the gift basket. What you put inside of the gift basket is the investments. Mm -hmm. So maybe your RSP is a gift bag and your tax-free savings is a gift basket. So they look a little bit different, but you can put different things inside of them. So maybe you want to put in a stock or a bond or a cash or a mutual fund. That's the actual gift because it's a gift that keeps on giving <laughs> right when you're investing it. So I love that analogy. And Laura, what were you telling me about how they named your tax free savings when you had it with the bank? Yeah, well, it's interesting. It's actually just been a newer term that I've seen online where it was an investment tax free savings account. And that was actually what got me curious about it. And from our mutual friend, Chris, having lots of conversations with him about money that mm -hmm. I learned that it really is just the same account, but now it's like kind of, they're putting it out there more that it's like, but I thought it was two different accounts until I came to you and I was like, yo, Kristen, I want to set up an <laughs> investment tax free savings account, you know, like I want to have this, this yeah. loaded with gifts, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah, it's the every tax free savings account, you can do that. I'm like, what? No way. Right. Previously, when I was younger, my parents, they um, obviously told me to get a tax free savings account because they're all about saving money. <laughs> and so I had it, but then I never knew that you could invest and do all of these other things with it. I didn't get that next level step of education, which is why I'm so fired up for this because it's yeah. like when we don't know, we just don't know. You know, we're doing the very best that we can. Yeah. But there's so many other levels with education and being excited about it. Like you can really take this stuff to the next level. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's interesting because we yeah, you're right. Like we don't know what we don't know and that's totally okay. Yeah. And that's what I tell people. I'm like, you don't have to know all the answers. We 
are expected to be financial experts and we were never given the education to become a financial expert. So it's like, if you need your teeth fixed, you go to the dentist. If you need your finances fixed, it's okay to reach out for financial help as well. Right. For sure, yeah. Yeah. So, and one thing I will say too, like I find in the banks, like you just go open up account, but there is no education unless you actually ask maybe specifically for somebody to explain something, then maybe they will. Whereas I love yeah. doing stuff with you because it's always the education first. <laughs> and then I then get to actually make an educated decision of what I actually yeah. want, right? It's like in the normal yeah. traditional way, we do a lot of education. It's backwards where it's like, yeah, you're told what to do. And then you're making decisions based off of what you're told instead of it, only if you ask for more information, you will receive yeah. more information. Yeah, I really appreciate that because that's totally my philosophy is I want people to feel educated and empowered around their decisions mm -hmm. because like I can't make decisions for you. I can help guide you. But if you don't understand what we're doing with your money, then you're not going to feel very good about putting that 10 percent away. Yeah. Right. And so that actually really brings me to the next point that I want to dive into is, OK, so say you open a tax free savings account. What do what's the gift? What are we putting inside of that gift basket? I want to touch on two different things today. One being a high interest savings account. Now with a high interest savings account, it sounds really good, high interest savings. And I'm not saying mm -hmm. it's, it's a bad product, um, but you just want to be really careful and look at what's being offered because I'm seeing a lot right now that they'll say, for example, 5% interest for five months. Okay, well, what does it turn into after those five months, right? So you want to know what you're getting because in month six, if you're getting like 0.1% interest, it's not very exciting, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So you want to discover what that looks like. And some people don't know that they can put a high interest savings account in a tax-free savings if you go to the right dealer, which is the person that's helping you with, with the uh, investment. The other one that I want to look at is the mutual funds. Now, mutual funds can get very complicated <laughs> because there's literally thousands of mutual funds. So we're gonna do a whole nother video just on mutual funds and diving deeper into that. I think it's really important, but let's kind of cover the basics today. So if you are familiar with using mutual funds, comment mutual funds in the comments below. I love to hear that. And let's see kind of what that looks like. So what is a mutual fund? So a mutual fund is a collection of stocks or companies, right? So it maybe is like 50 or 100 different companies all put together into one um, mutual fund. So it gives you a lot of diversification. And now it's different if you were just investing in stocks yourself, because if you were investing in stocks yourself, say you owned four stocks and one of them doesn't do well, well, now you're only left with three. That's a big chunk of your portfolio. So let's use something that I'm sure we're all very familiar with. Say you have a small pizza. There's like, I don't know, let's say six slices. If you take one slice of pizza, you eat it, you, like your pizza is a lot smaller. But if you're in a mutual fund and you have a pizza with a hundred slices, you take one slice out because that one slice isn't doing well. You're like, whatever, I have 99 slices. Like we're going to be just fine. <laughs> right. We're still going to feed the army, you know? <laughs> and so it's knowing to how to have that diversification. And with a mutual fund, you get a professional money manager that literally they can trade thousands of stocks in a minute. Like we just don't have that capacity unless you're literally day trading. <laughs> so I really love a whole this. huge wormhole. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that. We're not even going down there, right? So obviously you want to choose your investment based off of what you feel comfortable with, some things to consider is risk tolerance and volatility, right? Because those are some things that could be uh, influential on your decisions. So if we're looking at emergency fund, this is typically something that's shorter term. So a high interest savings account could be really good here because it's shorter term, right? And lower risk. But if you're comfortable with a little bit more volatility, 
knowing that the historically the market has always moved in an upward direction, then a mutual fund could be a really great place. There are some secure mutual funds that could be really good for short term investments as well. Again, it can get a little complicated. I hope that shed some light on, you know, the different things that you can do here, but your mutual funds can give you a stronger return typically than a high interest savings account. So lots of different options. I highly recommend speaking with somebody. Like I said, it's okay to reach out for financial help. If you want personalized tips, I'm more than happy to help you. You can definitely book a call with me. And I think that it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of different kinds of accounts and different things you can put inside of that gift basket. But overall, if you're just starting out, tax-free savings is definitely something to explore. Does that, does that make sense? Is there anything else that um, you're curious about in terms of tax-free savings account? Definitely comment it below and I'm more than happy to cover that in another video as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely a lot to learn with all of this stuff. And the more questions you have, honestly, the better. Throw them out here. You're never yeah. going to get a, an answer to it. It'll just kind of stay as this looming question. I know when we <laughs> honestly, when we don't have education, especially around finances, I find that like it can be a little bit more challenging to make some risks and make some money and in investment and stuff like that when you don't really feel secure with who, you, like the information that you have. And also what you're doing with your money, like even how you're talking about, like having all these different options for mutual funds, like some people might be more risky, some people might not. And I used to be like a lot more risky and I'm totally okay making those risks, like with like different types yeah. of investments. However, it's so nice. Like there's literally nothing better than having a stable base. And then yeah. once you have that going and then like having multiple different options, you know, like having some that are like more safe and they're making you significant like amounts of money, like over time, you know, but then also being able to then start playing with it a little bit more and be like, okay, yeah. let's do this with a little bit more risk. Cause at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what it does. Like if it goes, all great, in. if it yeah. doesn't, then it doesn't matter. Cause I still have this stable base and this stable foundation to be able to do this with. And I think it's so great that there's just so many options for this. So thank you for taking the time to yeah. explain that to all of us. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And so um, for those of you listening or watching, what are some of the things that you're wanting to start saving for? Like what, if you have this, this fund, both your emergency fund, obviously there's tons of stuff that could go on with your emergency stuff. We won't start planning emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> what are some I got that wood. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to go down that route we'll let those come up spontaneously and then we'll deal with the emotions that come up as they come up but what is the vision that you have like if you were to start putting money aside like what would your future look like if you had more security what are some of the mm -hmm. things that you would want to invest into um I know I was having a conversation with a girlfriend of mine and she was saying how she wanted to um like reinvest or invest into a new educational course for her profession, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so she's a massage therapist. Like there's so many things that we can really do when we have that secure thing. And it's such a shame when some of our dreams and things that we really want go to waste because of finances, you yeah. know? So this really is a way where it's not just about money. It's about like how you can invest this into your dreams to make this lifetime like the most amazing that you possibly could, because it is so yeah. possible for all of us to be living that life that we're super lit up about and passionate about. So getting clear on what those things are that are actually exciting you that you're wanting to to save for. So we'd love to hear if you're open to putting them in the comments. What are some of these things that that you're looking to to save up for? And I think honestly, from my experience with clients, if you can get the education and the mindset around money, there's really nothing that stops you. It's those two things. You can literally create your dream life. It's it's mm -hmm. so exciting to see. It really is. Yeah. And that's our hopes for the series is that you're going to like leave this feeling like so empowered and zinging mm -hmm. in your financial yeah. life and taking that and then utilizing it to really make that ideal life that you want to have happen possible. Um, yeah. I know even for me, like along my journey, like the amount of money I've been able to invest into coaches and personal development and into my business and all of these things, like money is such a beautiful thing when you can really allow it to work for you. You know, there's a lot of mm -hmm. kind of um, limiting beliefs that come around money. Oh, money is bad or you're greedy if you have money or all of these things, or if you want to like 
do something amazing in your life, then like, who are you to do that? Or all of these like stories come up, right? That try to hold us back. But it really is like, it's totally, it's a tool, you know, it's a tool to help us to be able to get where we go and money won't make us happy, but it definitely (laughs) allows us to invest into things that will bring us excitement that we're passionate about and things like that. So totally. Yeah. And then also um, like not having to rely on like credit card. We're going to go into another episode on that, but not having to rely on a credit card coming like for these things. Like, you know, if something comes up in your life or having to be like, oh, well, do I want to invest into this course or this, this and put it on my credit card? Because knowing that that's kind of like a weight that's looming there that you still have to pay back, you know, it's Mm -hmm. like, how good would it feel in order to like actually be able to just have that money to be like, yeah, it's a confident decision now that I'm going to say yes to this opportunity because you know that you actually have it there. Right. So there's kind of so many like amazing things that can happen once this starts happening. And Mm -hmm. um, Einstein, he was the one that said interest is the eighth wonder of the world. (laughs) Yeah. Once you understand how interest can work for you instead of against you, you got it. Like there's nothing that can stop you because you're using it in your best interest to grow your finances instead of to eat away at your finances. For sure. Yeah. I've never actually heard it said that way, Kristen, about like interest being working for you or against you because Mm -hmm. anybody who's had credit card debt knows that like that interest piles up quick. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then you're just, you're just in this like rat race, like trying to like pay off this like interest plus like pay off your actual principal. And yeah, we can go into this more, but if you go based off of the minimum payment of what the credit cards tell you, (laughs) oh my God, you will literally be a lifetime of just paying this. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, so just to chat a little bit about like kind of some stuff that can hold people back from really taking this next action step and like maybe putting in the comments, like what are some of the stories maybe that right now is popping into your mind as to what's preventing you from taking that action step of really going out there and doing some more education if you need to, or if you have questions asking those questions, you know, or is Mm -hmm. it like, I'm going, I know I'm going to go and open up an account, or maybe you want to go set up an an appointment with Kristen to really like, like hash this out and see if this really Mm -hmm. is personalized for you. What is it that's holding you back from actually taking that next step? Right. Cause we can have all the education in the world. We have everything at our fingertips now with YouTube and, and, um, the internet and social media, but it really is, it's like, we can overload ourselves with education, but when it comes to us actually implementing this stuff, what is it that's holding you back? Is it procrastination? Is it the, I'll do it later? Right. And really like honoring those stories, and being mm-hmm. with ourselves in those stories, but then mm-hmm. making something else more of a priority. You know, if this is something that is an actual priority that you want to get yourself into an amazing financial situation, it has to become higher than the stories, you know, yeah. like it has to become a, a greater charge than the stories, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. tuning into what those stories are maybe for you that may be holding you back. And then um, our challenge for you this week, who here is ready for their weekly challenge. (laughs) So your weekly challenge this week is really to do more research. You know, like I encourage you, don't just take what Chris and I say, you know, do your own research, ask questions, put them in the comments here. Um, If you're anything like me, you may have questions come up later on when you're outside on your walk or you're doing this, or you're doing that about your day, Mm -hmm. write them down right away and then come back and throw them in here. Book a call with Kristen if you want to go more personally into your financial situation that you have and see if this actually isn't a good account for you. But I know from my personal experience, like this account is really great when it comes to being able to open up new doors and new possibilities of what is actually there. And Mm -hmm. we want you to really know the most about this. You can make that educated decision. So um, let us know what your next step is, whether that is doing your research whether it is opening up your account, whether it's booking a call with Kristen, um, whatever that thing is, take that next step. You know, you're obviously here for a reason and yeah. we're here for it. Yeah, I I love that. And I think there's just so much around money and finance and taking one step at a time is literally the best, the best route to go. Yeah. 
So just as a quick summary, I know we talked about a lot today. So we talked a little bit about how RSPs different from tax-free savings accounts and even high interest savings accounts. So remember your RSP, there's no tax to put it in, but there's tax to take it out. Your tax-free savings is no tax to put it in, no tax to take it out. And your typical savings account doesn't give you a lot of growth. <laughs> Just remember that your gift basket is the account and what you put inside of it is your investment, whether it's a high interest savings account, stocks or mutual funds. And just using that analogy, because so many people tell me they're like, I didn't know I could put any investments in my tax free savings. And that's OK. We're here to tell you, you can now, you know. <laughs> so just just taking that step. I really encourage you to take an actionable step and I'd love to hear in the comments of what that is so we can be on the journey with you and encouraging you. And I know Laura and I have both implemented this in our lives, so we're here with you. And just to take a moment to feel into that. We are, you know, heart-centered money conversations, right? It's about tying that practical and the mindset all together. So I really want to just take a moment to thank you for stepping out of your comfort zone and watching this video, learning about your finances. I see it on a daily basis. I know it can be heavy. So thank you so much for that. And in our next episode, we're going to dive deeper into the RSP. So registered retirement savings plan and when those might be the best options. So if you want to maximize your investments, definitely catch us on the next video. So enjoy feeling into your heart around your finances. And we'll see you on the next episode. Yay. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much, Kristen. Bye.